Welcome, dear listeners, to another exciting episode of our podcast. Today, we are diving deep into the mysteries of the ocean, exploring the enigmatic depths and the creatures that lurk beneath. We are setting sail on a journey into the unknown, a journey that will take us into the heart of one of the world's most enduring maritime mysteries, the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle, a region that has captured the imagination of explorers, scientists, and the public alike, is a place where ships and planes have mysteriously vanished without a trace. It's a place shrouded in mystery, a place of strange occurrences and unexplained phenomena. But what really lies beneath the surface of this infamous triangle? What secrets does it hold? And what can it tell us about the world we live in? In this episode, we'll be exploring these questions and more. We'll delve into the historical legends of the Kraken, the scientific evidence of giant squids, and the unique characteristics that make these creatures so fascinating. We'll also discuss the various theories surrounding the Bermuda Triangle, from magnetic anomalies to methane gas bubbles, and try to separate fact from fiction. So buckle up, listeners, as we embark on this thrilling journey into the depths of the ocean and the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. Let's dive in! However, it's important to note that the Bermuda Triangle is not recognized as an official region by the U.S. Board on Geographic Names or any other international geographic organization. It does not appear on any official world maps. Instead, it exists primarily in the realm of popular culture and folklore, a testament to our fascination with the unexplained and the unknown. Despite the lack of official recognition, the Bermuda Triangle continues to captivate the public imagination. It's a place where the ordinary rules of physics and nature seem to be suspended, a place where the unexplained is the norm. Whether or not the Bermuda Triangle is a hotbed of paranormal activity or simply a region prone to natural disasters and human error, the term Bermuda Triangle has become a symbol of the world's most enduring maritime mysteries. Let's remember Christopher Columbus, the famed explorer had his own brush with the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. On his first voyage to the New World in 1492, Columbus sailed through what is now known as the Bermuda Triangle. His logs from this voyage provide the first written accounts of strange occurrences in this region. According to Columbus's logs, on the evening of October 11, 1492, he noticed that his compass was behaving strangely. The needle, instead of pointing to magnetic north, was fluctuating and pointing erratically. This was one of the first recorded instances of compass anomalies in the Bermuda Triangle. In addition to the compass anomalies, Columbus also reported seeing a strange light in the distance. He described it as a small wax candle that rose and lifted up, which to some seemed to be an indication of land. However, the light was observed four hours before land was sighted, and its source remains a mystery. Columbus's encounter with the Bermuda Triangle adds an intriguing historical dimension to the region's mystery. His accounts of compass anomalies and strange lights are consistent with many of the later reports of unexplained phenomena in the Bermuda Triangle. While Columbus may not have understood the significance of his experiences at the time, his logs provide early evidence of the unusual occurrences that have come to define the Bermuda Triangle. Let's talk some more about one of the most famous incidents associated with the Bermuda Triangle is the disappearance of Flight 19. This incident occurred on December 5, 1945, when five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers, collectively known as Flight 19, vanished during a routine training mission. The flight, led by experienced flight instructor Lieutenant Charles Taylor, took off from the Naval Air Station Fort Lauderdale in Florida. The plan was for the squadron to conduct a bombing exercise in the area, then head north over the Grand Bahama Island before returning to base. However, things didn't go as planned. About an hour and a half into the flight, Taylor reported that his compasses were malfunctioning and that he believed they were flying in the wrong direction. Despite attempts from the ground control to guide them back, the flight continued to stray off course. As the hours passed, the weather deteriorated and radio contact with Flight 19 became increasingly sporadic. The last transmission from the flight was a request for a weather check. After that, Flight 19 was never heard from again. A search and rescue mission was launched involving hundreds of ships and aircraft. Tragically, one of the search and rescue planes, a PBM Mariner with a 13-man crew, also disappeared without a trace. 
Despite one of the most extensive sea and air searches in history, no wreckage or bodies from Flight 19 or the Mariner were ever found. The disappearance of Flight 19 remains one of the most enduring mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. The incident has been the subject of numerous investigations, theories, and speculations, but the fate of the five bombers and their 14 crew members remains unknown. The Flight 19 incident serves as a stark reminder of the Bermuda Triangle's reputation as a place where planes and ships seemingly vanish without a trace. What else can we learn? Bruce Gernon's experience in the Bermuda Triangle is one of the most documented and intriguing accounts. On December 4, 1970, Gernon, along with his father and a business associate, were flying from the Bahamas to Miami in a Beechcraft Bonanza, a small private aircraft. As they were flying over the Bahamas, Gernon noticed a strange cloud formation in front of them. It was a lenticular, or lens-shaped cloud, which is not uncommon. However, as they approached it, the cloud began to change shape and size rapidly, forming a tunnel, or vortex. Despite his initial hesitation, Gernon decided to fly into the tunnel, hoping it would provide a shortcut through the storm. Inside the tunnel, Gernon reported experiencing a sensation of zero gravity and seeing lines of white light streaking past the aircraft. His compass was spinning wildly, and his navigational instruments were malfunctioning. After what felt like only a few minutes, they emerged from the tunnel. When Gernon contacted Miami Air Traffic Control, they informed him that only 47 minutes had passed since his last radio check in the Bahamas. However, the flight should have taken 75 minutes. Somehow, Gernon and his passengers had traveled a distance of 250 miles in a time frame that seemed impossible based on their speed and the time elapsed. Gernon believes that he experienced a time warp or time dilation, a concept from Einstein's theory of relativity, which suggests that time can speed up or slow down depending on the speed at which an object is moving. While this theory is generally applied to objects moving at or near the speed of light, Gernon's experience suggests that it might also occur under certain conditions in the Bermuda Triangle. The Bruce Gernon experience is one of the most fascinating accounts of unexplained phenomena in the Bermuda Triangle. It's a story that challenges our understanding of time and space and adds another layer of mystery to the enigma of the Bermuda Triangle. Let's talk about the inhabitants.
changes in wind speed and direction. These weather conditions can be particularly dangerous for ships and aircraft. The Gulf Stream, a powerful ocean current that flows through the Bermuda Triangle, is another natural phenomenon that can pose a danger. The Gulf Stream can cause rapid, sometimes unpredictable changes in weather. It can also create choppy sea conditions and can carry away debris, making it harder to locate a ship or plane that has sunk. While the Bermuda Triangle is often associated with supernatural phenomena and alien theories, it's important to remember that many of the disappearances in the area can be explained by natural phenomena. The ocean is a powerful and unpredictable force, and the Bermuda Triangle is a stark reminder of the respect it commands. As we conclude our journey through the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle, we are left with a sense of awe and respect for the power and unpredictability of the ocean. From the legend of the Kraken to the enigma of the Bermuda Triangle, the ocean continues to captivate our imagination and challenge our understanding of the natural world. We've explored the tales of giant squids capable of sinking ships with their enormous tentacles. We've delved into the stories of ships and planes that vanished without a trace, leaving behind only questions. We've examined the natural phenomena that could explain these disappearances, from methane gas eruptions to rogue waves. We've also considered the role of human error and technological failures in the Bermuda Triangle's mysteries. From navigational mistakes caused by the Earth's magnetic anomalies to the potential for mechanical failures, we've seen that human factors can contribute to the region's dangers. The Bermuda Triangle serves as a reminder of the mysteries that still exist in our world. Despite our technological advancements and scientific knowledge, there are places and phenomena that continue to elude our understanding. The Bermuda Triangle is one such place, a region where the known laws of nature seem to bend and twist, creating a realm of mystery and intrigue. As we continue to explore and understand our world, let's remember the lessons of the Bermuda Triangle. For in the words of Marie Tharp, the pioneering oceanographic cartographer, the world is a book, and those who do not travel read only one page. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cast our minds back, way back, to a time when seafaring was a perilous endeavor, a time when sailors whispered tales of monstrous creatures lurking in the unfathomable depths of the ocean. Among these tales, one creature stood out, a beast so formidable, so terrifying, that its very name struck fear into the hearts of the bravest mariners. This creature was the Kraken. The Kraken, a monstrous sea creature of colossal proportions, was said to dwell off the coasts of Norway and Greenland. It was described as a giant squid-like beast, capable of dragging entire ships into the watery abyss with its enormous tentacles. The mere sight of this creature was said to be a harbinger of doom, a sign of an impending disaster that would leave no survivors. These tales, passed down from generation to generation, were dismissed as mere sailors' yarns, the product of overactive imaginations and long, lonely nights at sea. That was until the 19th century, when science began to catch up with legend. A beak of an unknown squid, about the size of a human palm, was found on the coast of Denmark. This discovery sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Could the kraken be real? The answer, it turned out, was a resounding yes. The kraken was not just a figment of seafaring folklore, but a real creature, a giant squid. Since that groundbreaking discovery, more than 21 species of giant squid have been described, each one more fascinating than the last. The first video of this elusive creature was recorded in 2004 in the waters of the North Atlantic, not far from the infamous Bermuda Triangle. The sight of the giant squid emerging from the ocean's darkness, its tentacles reaching out in a swift, predatory attack, was a sight to behold. It was a moment that bridged the gap between legend and reality, a moment that brought a centuries-old sea monster to life. Diving into the world of giant squids, these creatures are truly a marvel of the deep sea. Their size alone is enough to inspire awe. Some records indicate that the largest giant squid ever found was a staggering 59 feet long and weighed almost a ton. That's the size of a big bus. Some scientists even believe that giant squids can reach up to 150 feet in length, almost twice the size of a basketball court. But it's not just their size that makes these creatures fascinating. Giant squids are equipped with the largest eyes in the animal kingdom, each one about the size of a basketball. 
These enormous eyes allow them to see prey in the pitch black depths of the ocean, a feat that most creatures on the planet are incapable of. When a giant squid spots a potential meal, it employs its eight limbs and two extra long tentacles to secure its prey. These tentacles are covered with dozens of suction cups, each filled with sharp teeth. Once the squid has its prey in its grasp, escape is nearly impossible. The giant squid's hunting technique is one of surprise. They come from the depths, unseen from the deck of a ship or the surface of the water. But they can see their prey from afar, thanks to their exceptional eyesight. In a swift, sudden attack, they use their tentacles to ensnare their prey, bringing it to their beak-shaped mouth. Despite their size and formidable hunting skills, giant squids remain some of the most elusive creatures on Earth. They spend most of their time at depths of 1,300-3,000 feet, far beyond the reach of most human exploration. As a result, scientists know very little about their behavior, social life, or habits. But one thing is certain. The ocean is teeming with these incredible creatures, each one a testament to the wonders and mysteries of the deep sea. Now imagine this. You're on a ship, sailing through the vast expanse of the ocean, when suddenly, a giant squid emerges from the depths. It notices your ship, and mistaking it for food, it quickly approaches and attacks with its tentacles. With its eight limbs and two extra-long tentacles, it wraps around your boat, biting the deck with the sharp teeth on each arm. The squid's surprise attack is its primary weapon. It comes from the depths, unseen from the deck of a ship, but it can see the ship from afar, thanks to its exceptional eyesight. In a swift, sudden attack, it uses its tentacles to ensnare the ship, rocking it from side to side until one of its parts sinks in the water. However, despite its size and strength, the giant squid is unlikely to sink a large metal ship. While it could potentially cause damage, it's unlikely that a single giant squid could sink a large ship that disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. But what if there were more than one? What if a group of giant squids attacked a fleet of ships sailing through the Bermuda Triangle? In the past centuries, when ships were made of wood and were lighter, it's possible that giant squids could have sunk an entire fleet. They could have wrapped their strong tentacles around the decks, made holes in the ship's bodies with their sharp beaks, and broken the masts and torn the sails with their toothy suction cups. The ships would have sunk in a matter of minutes, leaving only survivors to reach the shore and tell tales of the monstrous creatures that attacked them. These stories could be the origins of the legends of the Kraken, tales of giant sea monsters that have been passed down through generations. While we now have sonars and equipment for monitoring the sea space, the thought of giant squids lurking in the depths, ready to attack, is a chilling reminder of the mysteries and dangers that lie beneath the surface of the sea. The next topic is Bermuda Triangle, a region stretching between the points of Miami, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico, has been the subject of intrigue and speculation for decades. This area, which is one of the most heavily traveled shipping lanes in the world, has been associated with an unusually high number of ships and aircraft disappearing under mysterious circumstances. Theories about the Bermuda Triangle range from the plausible to the fantastical. Some suggest that the area is a hotbed for unusual natural phenomena. For instance, the Bermuda Triangle is known to be a place where compasses point to true north rather than magnetic north, potentially causing confusion and navigational errors. This phenomenon, known as the agonic line, could contribute to the disappearances. Another theory points to the presence of large underwater methane gas bubbles. Scientists have discovered craters off the coast of Norway that were likely created by such bubbles. If similar methane eruptions occur in the Bermuda Triangle, they could theoretically sink ships by decreasing the water's density. However, Despite the numerous theories and the Triangle's ominous reputation, data from the U.S. Coast Guard suggests that the number of incidents in the Bermuda Triangle is not significantly higher than in other parts of the Atlantic Ocean. Many of the disappearances can be attributed to human error, bad weather, and heavy maritime traffic. Moreover, the Bermuda Triangle is subject to frequent tropical storms and hurricanes, and it is also traversed by the Gulf Stream a strong ocean current known for causing rapid, sometimes unpredictable changes in weather. The region also includes the Milwaukee Depth, the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean, adding another layer of danger for ships and aircraft. The mystery of the Bermuda Triangle is a complex puzzle. 
It's a place where natural phenomena, human error, and perhaps even giant squids intersect, creating a web of intrigue and speculation that continues to captivate our collective imagination. Now let's talk about the, the Cotopaxi, a ship that has become synonymous with the enigma of the Bermuda Triangle, offers a fascinating tale. This ship set sail in 1925, embarking on a journey from Charleston, South Carolina, to Havana. However, it never reached its destination. The ship, along with its crew, vanished without a trace, adding another mysterious incident to the lore of the Bermuda Triangle. The disappearance of the SS Cotopaxi remained an unsolved mystery for decades. Then, in the 1980s, a shipwreck was discovered 40 miles off St. Augustine, Florida. The wreck was initially unidentifiable, earning it the nickname Bear Wreck. It was only after years of research and investigation, primarily by marine biologists, that the ship was finally identified as the missing SS Cotopaxi. This identification was confirmed in January 2020, almost a century after the ship's disappearance. The reappearance of the SS Cotopaxi raised more questions than it answered. How did the ship end up so far from its intended route? And why did it sink? The shipwreck's location, outside the boundaries of the Bermuda Triangle, added another layer of mystery to the incident. The SS Cotopaxi incident serves as a poignant reminder of the ocean's unpredictability and the enduring mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's a tale of a ship that set sail on a routine voyage, only to disappear into the annals of maritime lore, leaving behind a trail of questions that continue to intrigue and mystify to this day. The term Bermuda Triangle was first coined by writer Vincent Gaddis in 1964 in an article for the magazine Argosy. Gaddis used the term to describe an area in the Atlantic Ocean, which is bounded by Miami, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico. He noted that a number of ships and planes had disappeared under mysterious circumstances in this region, often without a trace. Gaddis's article sparked widespread interest and led to the Bermuda Triangle becoming a popular topic in books, articles, and documentaries. The term Bermuda Triangle quickly entered popular culture, becoming synonymous with mystery, intrigue, and unexplained phenomena. As an experienced sailor and the first man to ever sail non-stop on his own around North and South America, Matt Rutherford has seen a lot during his voyages. But what he saw in 2013 while sailing through the waters of the Atlantic with his colleague surely stands out. Some 800 miles off the coast of Bermuda, not far away from the famous Bermuda Triangle, they noticed a boat that seemed to be moving by itself. The sails weren't up and the motor wasn't running. The sailors decided to check if there was someone who needed their help aboard, so they moved closer to the mysterious ship. Once they got there, things only got weirder as they realized there wasn't a living soul aboard. Rutherford started filming to document their discovery. The boat looked so awfully abandoned that they expected to find some pretty scary things in there. But it didn't stop Rutherford from searching the vessel. The boat, which turned out to be named Wolfhound, looked like an upscale one probably costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was pretty weird to find it floating by itself in the middle of the ocean. It seemed like whoever abandoned it was leaving in a rush. There were clothes and other personal belongings all over the main cabin. Some parts of the ceiling had fallen and some drawers had popped open. The brave sailors decided to tow the ghost ship back to Bermuda. It wasn't easy because Wolfhound was bigger and heavier than their boat. After days at sea, the crew was running low on fuel and asked a passing freighter to stop and give them some gas. They kept pulling Wolfhound until the tow line got wrapped around the rudder and they realized they could get stranded in the Bermuda Triangle. So they had to abandon the ship. What really happened and how Wolfhound ended up in the middle of the ocean will probably remain a mystery. Rumor has it that it belonged to a member of the Royal Irish Yacht Club. The ship was going on its first voyage from Connecticut to Bermuda and then Antigua. It got in a terrible storm around 400 miles away from Delaware, 
The winds were so strong that the yacht suffered two knockdowns. A Greek cargo ship rescued the crew. They left the ship with an emergency beacon on. The rescued crew members shared that they saw the ship sink, which only adds more questions to the story. How did it get back to the surface? Does the Bermuda Triangle have anything to do with that? Christopher Columbus himself reported some unusual compass activity going on in this mysterious area while he was on his way to the New World. Despite the stories of more than 50 ships and 20 planes disappearing in the area, it remains one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. It could make sense because the busier the area, the more accidents happen there. But then again, it's not the number of disappearances that makes the place so mysterious. It's the lack of explanation and wreckage lost for good. The first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle was the USS Pickering. In 1800, it departed from the U.S. on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew. No one ever heard anything from them ever since. The popular explanation is that the ship was taken out by a storm. But because no one found any wreckage, we'll never know for sure. The largest ship that has ever disappeared in this mysterious area was the USS Cyclops. In March 1918, carrying a crew of 306 people, the USS Cyclops left Barbados and headed home to Baltimore. The ship passed through the Bermuda Triangle on its journey and vanished into thin air, or rather, water. The Cyclops never sent any distress signal and disappeared without any explanation or trace. The Bermuda Triangle isn't the only place in the world where ships go missing or mysteriously resurface. One of the most famous ghost ship stories would be of SS Bechimo. The large cargo steamer was built in Sweden. On October 1, 1931, it got caught in pack ice. The crew decided to wait it out and managed to break free after a couple of days, only to get trapped again in less than a week. This time, they didn't manage to make it out. A rescue team went by air to save 22 of the crew members. 15 other members stayed in a wooden shelter they built not far away from the ship. Their plan was to wait out the winter and get back aboard. At the end of November, a strong blizzard was rushing through the area. When it was over, Bechimo seemed to have gone away with the storm. The captain decided it must have broken and sunk. But a few days later, a local hunter informed them that he had seen the ship around 45 miles away from their camp. The crew managed to find the ship and took the most valuable cargo from its hold. They had fears that Bechimo wouldn't live through that rough water but it did manage to survive after all. Once the ice was gone, it floated away and ended up drifting along the shores of Canada and Alaska. Many people reported seeing the ghost ship in an open sea. Some even tried to board it to save the ship, but the weather didn't allow it to happen. The last time someone saw SS Bechimo was in 1969, 38 years after its crew had left it it could still be drifting somewhere in the ocean. The story of MV Hoyita happened in the South Pacific. The ship was originally a wooden luxury yacht. After serving for 20 years to various owners, it became a merchant ship. In 1959, it set on a trading voyage that was supposed to last around two days. When it didn't reach its destination on time, no one was worried at first as things happen in the open waters. After another day and no distress signals from the Hoyita, it was obvious that something serious was going on with it. There were 25 people aboard and their families wanted to find them. A search and rescue crew worked for six days looking for the ship or at least its wreckage in an area of nearly 100,000 square miles. That's one and a half times as big as Florida. 
Sadly, the mission had come back with no results. It seemed like Hoyita had disappeared without a trace. A month later, another merchant ship noticed Hoyita driving in the ocean, miles and miles away from its original route, and none of the crew members or passengers were on board. The cargo had also disappeared. The lifeboats were also gone, so the people must have escaped the ship hoping to save themselves. It turned out that the crew had been trying to get help as they tuned the radio to the International Distress Channel. But the damaged cable didn't let them send the signal any further than two miles. It also looked like when they were leaving the ship, the crew took the logbook with them, and we still don't know what exactly happened to Hoyita. Family members of those who were on board are still looking for answers. One professor claims it must have been a corroded pipe that leaked and flooded the vessel. But we'll most likely never know for sure. In the Pacific Ocean, near Japan, there is an area nicknamed the Devil's Sea. It's believed to be one of the 12 vile vortices around the Earth. Some people claim that vile vortices have weird things going on in them because the pull of the planet's electromagnetic waves is stronger there than anywhere else. The most famous ship that disappeared in the area was a fishery patrol vessel in 1952. The ship went there to investigate the vessels that went missing previously and disappeared along with 31 crew members. Scientists who don't believe it was a mysterious disappearance blame the underwater volcano eruption for what happened. Some people are still afraid of sailing through this region because more than 50 ships and 20 planes have disappeared here since the mid-19th century. You won't find this place on a regular paper map as it's not an official region of the Atlantic Ocean. It's just an imaginary area of water in the shape of a triangle near the southeastern coast of the U.S. Right now, we're going there to debunk all the myths and fairy tales about this place. The most popular theory says that the ancient city of Atlantis was once located where the Bermuda Triangle is now. It was inhabited by a more advanced civilization than the rest of the people on Earth. In this area, some mysterious crystals were installed that generated infinite energy and powered the entire city. Then the city sank, and its ruins still lie on the bottom of the Atlantic. But among its ruins, there are still places where crystals work. They're the reason for most disappearances. Crystals randomly release beams of energy towards the surface and disable the electronics of planes and ships. There are no facts to support this theory. Someone once wrote this legend in a book about the Bermuda Triangle, and some people have been supporting it ever since. However, there's some oddity associated with electronics. Astronauts of the International Space Station noticed the Earth's magnetic field is weakened in the Bermuda Triangle area. This field is a shield that protects us from solar radiation. Above the triangle, the particles of the sun's rays move faster than in any other part of the planet. This causes unstable work in the electronics of satellites flying in the atmosphere of Earth. It doesn't apply to ships and planes, though. There's also a theory that the Bermuda Triangle is the center of a magnetic anomaly causing navigation errors, but regular checks of the magnetic map of this region don't reveal any issues. You arrive at the place, the water is calm, and there's no coming storm in sight. You look at the compass and see the arrow moving from side to side. Oh no, it's begun! Panic rises within you, and you quickly turn the steering wheel of the ship to sail away from this place. Oh stop, there has long been an explanation for the strange compass behavior in this area. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the rare places on the planet where True North and the Magnetic One are in the exact same direction. True North is the geographic north pole of our planet. Magnetic North directs to the North Magnetic Pole, which constantly wanders around the Earth. Sometimes these poles coincide, and the straight line that connects North and South is called the Agonic Line. If you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. It won't point exactly to the North. Imagine that you're the captain of a ship sailing in the Bermuda Triangle at the beginning of the 20th century. You need to know where north is to get to the shore. You look at the compass and it points incorrectly. You're deviating from your original course and sailing in the wrong direction. 
There's the Caribbean Sea, near the Triangle, peppered with small islands. The sea floor here isn't deep. The ship can get in shallow waters. And now, the ship is stuck on a shoal, and you have no idea where you are. If this were the 21st century, the ship's captain would be able to reach the shore using GPS and other modern navigation. But the most interesting thing is that the compass would work correctly this time, since the magnetic North Pole hasn't already coincided with the true one for a long time in the territory of the Bermuda Triangle. The Agonic Line is somewhere far away from here. There are no problems with navigation now, but for some reason, this is where ships disappear. In fact, not just here, throughout the Atlantic Ocean, there are places where many more ships have gone. The Bermuda Triangle is not even in the top 10 of such places. One of the main reasons why many ships are lost here is that one of the most popular shipping routes in the Atlantic passes through the Bermuda Triangle. And the more ships in one place, the more shipwrecks. Simple probability. Other theories say there's a space-time rift in this region. Ships and planes fall into this rift and end up in the past or the future. But for some reason, there's not a single proof of this myth. There's no reason to think that the rift is hidden somewhere here. The base of an extraterrestrial civilization is located in the Bermuda Triangle. Visitors from other galaxies steal sea vessels along with the crew, so no one finds the wreckage of the ships. This is also a popular myth that has no scientific justification. Sunken ships are not found here, as there's one of the deepest trenches in the world. Any sinking ship will sink to a depth of about 19,000 feet. The enormous pressure and distance makes it difficult to find the ships. Also, the Puerto Rico trench is nearby. In some spots, it's as deep as 27,500 feet. The Kraken lives somewhere in the Triangle. It's a huge squid that sinks ships and is also a legend that sailors tell each other. However, gigantic squids live in the depths of the ocean. They can grow to the size of half a train car, but no cases have been recorded where they have sunk a large vessel. And in the area of the Bermuda Triangle, they've never even been seen. People in the past didn't know about the existence of these creatures, so when they saw them for the first time, they described them as huge, terrible monsters. Giant squids are some of the most elusive creatures on Earth, and scientists had to use sonar equipment to find them. They don't like to leave the dark depths and are likely to be afraid of the sound of any ship. A more realistic hypothesis about the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle is methane. Large deposits of this gas can be found under the seafloor of this region. From there, methane is released into the water. It takes the form of huge bubbles that quickly rise to the surface. Then, the gas makes the water almost boil, creating waves that sink ships. The theory is quite realistic, but numerous studies still haven't confirmed the presence of an increased concentration of methane in the region. Last time this phenomenon occurred was 15,000 years ago. Another credible theory implies the appearance of rogue waves. Imagine a clear, calm sea without wind. Suddenly, you hear a loud hum. In just a few seconds, a huge wave, 100 feet tall, appears from the calm surface and falls on your ship. Some scientists believe rogue waves are created by a surface sea current colliding with a strong headwind. There's a version claiming the wave is born because of the collision of warm and cold currents. But the most interesting theory says the waves are formed by kinetic vampirism. Under certain natural conditions, waves can exchange kinetic energy. And among all the waves, there will be one, the vampire, that gets the energy of all the others. When it accumulates enough energy, the vampire wave spills it out. This explains the force of the impact and its sudden disappearance. This phenomenon is observed in all the waters of the world's oceans, but there's no evidence that it occurs most often in the Bermuda Triangle. If rogue waves appeared there, it was not during a calm. A restless sea is the main reason for ship disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. Severe storms and hurricanes are a frequent thing there, because the Bermuda Islands is an area of high pressure that diverts thunderstorms towards the Triangle. Huge waves simply overturn ships, and thunder and lightning flashes disable planes' electronics. There's nothing mysterious about this. Storms and ship disappearances occur in all oceans. 
but a lot of legends were made exactly about the Bermuda Triangle. It all started in the middle of the 20th century when a book was published that tells us that Atlantis lies in the waters of the Triangle. No proof was given, but people liked this mysterious theory so much, they began to build upon it. They started making documentaries about it and writing new books. Each material devoted to the fantastic nature of the Triangle was based not on facts, but the theories of other written books and films. And when a topic is popular, you can make money on it. Readers enjoy it, and authors are rewarded. What's the most mysterious and blood-chilling place on Earth? The first thing that comes to mind is most likely the infamous Bermuda Triangle. This area has earned its spooky reputation after swallowing numerous ships and airplanes, which then disappeared without a trace. But is this place really so terrifying? Let's ask scientists. But first, I'll tell you a story or two. One of the most infamous disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle was Mary Celeste. The ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean on December 4, 1872. It was days after its journey began. Captain Benjamin Briggs with his wife and a two-year-old daughter were heading from New York to Genoa in Italy with some important cargo. Besides the family of the captain, there were seven other crew members on board the ship. Days later, a British ship, De Gradia, came across Mary Celeste by accident. Strangely, the ship was floating under a partial sail. Everything on board was intact. There was nothing strange with this situation, except for one thing. There was nobody on board the ship, and the lifeboat was missing. There were no traces of people on the ship. It couldn't be a pirate attack since all the belongings of the crew, as well as the cargo, were untouched. Theories like an undersea earthquake, an attack of a giant squid, or a natural disaster can be ruled out as well. They just don't fit. It was a clear day. The ship was in perfect condition. Why would people leave it and never come back? Whatever the reason, neither the crew nor the lifeboat has ever been found. It was November 29, 1925, when the SS Cotopaxi left Charleston, South Carolina and headed for Havana, Cuba, carrying a big load of coal and 32 crew members. The story has it that several days later, the steamer ran into a severe storm, got water in its hold, and started to list dramatically. On December 1st, the ship sent out a distress call, and since then, nothing has been heard from the crew ever again. The ship was believed to have vanished into thin air until it was found 95 years later. Scientists found SS Cotopaxi, and it turned out there was nothing mysterious about its story. At the moment, the ship lies at the bottom of the ocean about 35 miles away from St. Augustine, Florida. Researchers are also sure that the ship did send a distress signal during a storm, which most likely led to the sinking of the vessel. USS Cyclops was a huge carrier ship that used to supply fuel to the American fleet. On January 8, 1918, heavy and full of manganese ores, the ship departed from Rio de Janeiro and headed for Baltimore. Being only a couple of years old, the ship wasn't supposed to experience any problems. All 309 people on board felt safe and calm. But this feeling turned out to be deceptive because somewhere around March 4, 1918, the ship disappeared into thin air without sending a distress call or indicating it was having problems in any other way. In the history of the U.S. Navy, this case remains the accident that caused the largest loss of life at a time. SS El Faro was a much more recent disappearance. This cargo ship left Jacksonville, Florida on October 1, 2015 with 33 crew members and tons of vehicles, trailers, and containers on board. The huge vessel was supposed to deliver its load to Puerto Rico, but something went wrong. A regular tropical storm that started miles away suddenly transformed into a powerful hurricane that rushed towards El Faro. It started to circle around the cargo ship, making the communication from the vessel go silent. 
But the most shocking thing was that after causing all this commotion, the hurricane miraculously retreated in the same direction it had come from. Weeks later, after a thorough and extensive search, rescuers finally located the ship. It was still in one piece and sitting upright on the bottom at a depth of 15,000 feet. But the blood-chilling truth was that there was no trace of the crew members on board. As for airplanes, probably the most inexplicable disappearance happened on December 5, 1945. This case got the name The Lost Patrol. Flight 19 was the code name for five planes that departed from a naval base in Florida on a training flight. No one knows for sure what happened to the planes, but they never returned to the base. Most experts believe the commander of this group, Charles Taylor, got lost and led the planes in the wrong direction. Those were the machines that could land on water. So hypothetically, after getting low on fuel, the pilots could ditch and wait for help, rocking on the surface of the ocean. But it didn't happen. Although, two rescue Martin Mariner planes were searching the area all through the night and the next day. They found no trace of the five disappeared planes. But the most spine-chilling coincidence was that one of the rescue planes failed to return to the base as well. All six planes vanished into thin air, as if they had never existed. There have been several other plane disappearances when aircraft went off radars and never returned. In some cases, pilots had to send out a mayday distress call. In others, they disappeared in the blink of an eye when everything seemed to be going perfectly fine. Of course, over the years, there have been loads of theories trying to explain the phenomenon of the Bermuda Triangle. For example, some researchers believe that ships and planes crash and disappear in the area due to methane gas. And it has indeed been proven that in some areas of the ocean floor, there are massive storages of this gas. Therefore, when gas gets released into the water, the process can sink ships and make planes crash. Potentially, it can happen so fast that a craft in distress doesn't even have time to send SOS. The theory of a wormhole is preferred by those who love sci-fi. In short, a wormhole is a space-time shortcut. While the existence of wormholes hasn't been proven yet, this doesn't stop some people from believing that this phenomenon is what causes vanishings in the Bermuda Triangle. Another sci-fi theory is based on the interface of space civilizations. It's quite convenient to blame such disappearances on extraterrestrial forces. Though why they would choose exactly this area for their abductions remains unknown. Water spouts, or simpler, tornadoes in the ocean, are said to have been spotted in the Bermuda Triangle. This weather phenomenon raises water many feet up into the air. Potentially, this can make a ship disappear with ease. The human error theory may sound rather disappointing for those who love mysteries, but some are sure that all the crashes and disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle happen due to people's mistakes. There are too many confusing islands that are hard to distinguish from one another, as well as difficult weather conditions there. And now, let's see what modern-day scientists have to say. Disappointingly, they claim there's no mystery in the Bermuda Triangle whatsoever. The loss and disappearance of planes and ships is just a fact of probabilities. Researchers are sure that there's no evidence that in the Bermuda Triangle, mysterious events occur more often than in any other well-traveled large region of the ocean. The sheer volume of all that traffic in an area that is pretty hard to navigate gives us such unsettling statistics. But on a percentage basis, the number of vessels and aircraft missing in the Bermuda Triangle is the same as anywhere else in the world. And what theory do you believe? Why has only the Bermuda Triangle become famous? 
You know, there are other mysterious triangles where ships disappear for strange reasons too. The triangle we're going to visit may seem to you much more dangerous and scarier than the Bermuda one. People tell stories about extraterrestrial ships, portals to another dimension, or Atlantis in the Bermuda region, and you've probably heard all this stuff. But the triangle I'm talking about has other legends. Imagine that you're sailing on your boat and notice a round ship in the middle of the endless ocean. A mysterious woman is standing on the deck of this strange ship, staring at you. Yeah, such stories go around the Dragon Triangle. And if you try to figure out something about this place, you'll find that even the triangle's location is a mystery. This place is located near the Japanese coast in the Pacific Ocean. The triangle extends from Japan to the Bonin Islands and touches the Philippine Sea, but this is not its exact geolocation. Some records say the triangle is 70 miles east of the Japanese coast, while others say it's about 750 miles away. This difference in coordinates is because the region where the triangle is located is not marked on any maps. The exact dimensions of these waters are still unknown. The Dragon's Triangle is also called the Pacific Bermuda Triangle. It's like an evil twin brother of the latter, but it's older. The fact is that reports of strange disappearances of ships in this region appeared much earlier than reports about the Bermuda Triangle. For the first time, people found out about the mysterious power of this place back in the 13th century. The grandson of Genghis Khan sent 40,000 people on ships toward Japan to conquer the country. Their route passed through the Dragon's Triangle. However, these people didn't reach the shore because of typhoons in this zone. So all the ships sank. After this incident, Genghis Khan's grandson changed his mind about attacking the country. Immediately after that, people in Japan began to believe that this place had magical powers. In the modern world, divers and archaeologists have tried to decide whether this story is true. They've explored the bottom of the triangle and found artifacts from the sunken Mongolian fleet. A few centuries later, in the early 1800s, another story happened there. Sailors who traveled through the Dragon's Triangle saw a strange ship that looked similar to Japanese equipment for burning incense. There was only one person on board. It was a mysterious woman. However, no one could find out who she was. In the 1940s and 50s, reports about ships disappearing in the region of the Triangle began to arrive. Fishing boats and large ships went missing. Japan sent a research ship there to find out the cause of the disappearances. But that vessel, with 31 crew members, was also gone. The wreckage of the research vessel was discovered later, but no one found the crew members. People began to recall the legends about this place. According to one of the myths, dragons live under the surface of the ocean. They destroy ships and take people to satisfy their hunger. Such stories are thousands of years old, but over time, in addition to fairy tales, scientific hypotheses began to appear. Scientists have tried to find out what's so peculiar about this place. One suggested that cold and hot currents mix and then pass through areas that attract strong electromagnetic waves. And when these mixed hot and cold currents meet these waves, they form electromagnetic interference. Electronic equipment on ships begin to break down, and navigation devices fail. At this moment, a storm starts, and vessels become helpless. They can't send distress signals or determine their location. Another theory says that underwater volcanoes are at the bottom of the triangle. They spew hundreds of thousands of tons of magma, churn the waters, and create giant waves. Seismic activity often happens off the coast of Japan, so this theory is quite logical. Also, volcanic activity can explain ancient legends about underwater dragons. Besides, islands often appear and disappear in this region. When magma cools down underwater and creates layers, they move upward and form land. Then, 
During the next eruption, they collapse and go underwater, but some of them remain. So imagine some ship sailing, and then a huge island rises from underneath and cracks its hull. Perhaps methane hydrates destroy ships. These substances come out of the Earth's crust, form large bubbles in the water, then rise and explode. Such a giant bubble can damage a ship's hull or even destroy a vessel. Anyway, scientists don't know for sure the reason for the disappearance of boats yet. And in general, all those mysterious cases that have occurred in that place are most likely nothing more than legends. The Dragon and Bermuda Triangles are in the oceans, but how about a triangle in a lake? It's located between Michigan and Wisconsin, right inside Lake Michigan. In 1950, a plane with 108 passengers on board disappeared without a trace while flying over the lake. When the search began, rescuers found a few pieces of the aircraft on the water. Besides the plane, many ships have gone missing there. Sometimes people disappeared into thin air, right from boats. One such case happened in 1937. The ship was sailing through the Lake Michigan Triangle when Captain George Donner went to rest in his cabin. Three hours later, one of the crew members knocked on the door to wake the captain, but no one answered. When it became clear that something was wrong, the sailor walked inside, but saw no one there. The captain seemed to have vanished. The crew couldn't find him. Until now, the disappearance of Captain George Donner remains an unexplained mystery. It may be all fiction, but the Lake Michigan Triangle is creepy. And how about a triangle that's on the ground? This is the Bennington Triangle. It's located in the southwestern part of Vermont, USA. This is a place you really should avoid. There are many scary stories around it. It's up to you to decide whether they're true or not. In November 1945, a group of hunters passed through this area. A 74-year-old man was walking ahead of the group, and right in front of several people's eyes, he made a step and disappeared. No one could find him. The hunters called rescuers, but they didn't help. In December of 1946, several students went camping. An 18-year-old girl led a large group. She walked a few feet forward to figure out where to go next and disappeared. The tourists called the police. Officers began searching the area and the FBI joined them. They got some information from locals living in nearby towns. They said that some girls similar to the description had been walking with a man much older than her. The two of them left by car and were never seen again. Soon, a similar vehicle was found not far from New York. The car was burned, so the police and experts couldn't confirm that the missing girl was inside. Three years later, a man disappeared on the territory of the Triangle. He was waiting for a bus at the last stop. When the bus arrived, he got inside but didn't reach his destination. He didn't get off the bus and didn't appear anywhere else. The police couldn't find any trace of the missing man. But the most terrible case occurred in 1950. Near the Bennington Triangle, a woman was driving a truck with her young son. She stopped the car and left for a few minutes to drop by a store or gas station. But when she came back, there was no one in the car. The police were combing the area. In the search, they used sniffer dogs, which managed to get on the boy's trail. The dogs followed the path and stopped at one place in the forest. The trail ended there. And you know what that spot was? The place where that student girl disappeared in 1946. They say nothing is ever lost, and it's true. Let's discover ships frozen in time. The first one is truly fascinating. Here, the Antikytheria shipwreck. It's a Greek trading ship from the first century BCE. It's located on the east side of the Greek island of Antikythera and at the merging point of the Aegean and Mediterranean seas. Around 2,000 years later, in 1900, a group of Greek sponge divers discovered the wreck. 
They were going to Tunisia, yet they were forced to find shelter from a storm on a nearby island. Since they couldn't go anywhere due to the storm, they decided to look for sponges until the weather got calmer. One of the divers discovered the shipwreck at depths of around 130 feet. Imagine someone going for a sponge hunt, but getting out to the surface with archaeological treasures. The captain of the sponge boat talked to the Greek officials about what they had found. The officials sent two ships to the wreckage. The salvage operation was successful and discoveries are now in Greece's National Archaeological Museum in Athens. The findings included three life-sized marble horses, jewelry, coins, and hundreds of works of art, including a seven-foot-tall colossus statue of Hercules. Among these treasures, Antikythera of Phoebe, a bronze statue of a young man, caught more attention. Because the Ephebe doesn't comply with any familiar iconographic model, and there are no known copies of his type, he held a spherical object in his hand. Scholars have different theories of who that person could be, but they are not in a consensus yet. More than 70 years later, Jacques-Yves Cousteau and his team went to the area and recovered hundreds more artifacts and the remains of four people. Interestingly, they discovered a complex set of interlocking gears, capable of predicting the movement of the sun, moon, and several planets. The mechanism can also show the times of solar and lunar eclipses years into the future. Think of this Antikythera mechanism as an early computer calendar, you know, to plan significant events like agricultural activities, religious rituals, and Olympic games. These artifacts found in the Antikythera wreckage are some of the most important findings in modern archaeology. Just the Antikythera mechanism itself has changed our perception of the limits of ancient technology. The mechanism has a sophisticated design and was made over a thousand years ago. After all these amazing discoveries, experts believe that the wreckage site has remained largely unexplored and is mostly because of its location and the landscape of the seafloor on which the ship rests. The wreck is too deep for scuba divers, but too shallow to use something like a submersible. A survey made on the seafloor in 2012 showed evidence of a second wreck about 800 feet to the south. It's clear that this area has a lot to offer humanity. What would happen if those sponge hunters didn't go to the area? Scientists found a shipwreck in Antarctica at the bottom of the Weddell Sea 107 years after it sank. The name of the ship was Endurance, and it was the lost vessel of Antarctic explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton. Scientists who laid eyes on it decades later say it is among the greatest undiscovered shipwrecks ever. That is why they filmed the whole discovery. The video shows the remains of the Endurance and proves it is still in remarkable condition. It has been sitting in 10,000 feet of water for over a century, yet it looks like it sank very recently. So the story goes like this. The ship was crushed by ice and sank in 1915. Shackleton and his crewmates had to escape by themselves in small lifeboats. From then on, it was all about survival. Shackleton imagined to get his crew to safety. Then, the ship sank. Yes, this is a pretty impressive story. But why did scientists prize this ship? Firstly, Shackleton's Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition sailed to make the first land crossing of Antarctica. Yes, the crew was trapped in ice, but the intention was important. Secondly, it's about the challenge itself of finding the shipwreck. The Weddell Sea is almost always covered in thick sea ice. You know, the same ice that made the Endurance sink. Getting near the presumed sinking location is super hard, let alone being able to conduct research. Experts of the modern expedition team foresaw the time when the lowest extent of Antarctic sea ice would come using satellite images. They realized that the weather was in their favor to start an expedition. Dr. John Shears said that they have successfully completed the world's most difficult shipwreck search, fighting against constantly shifting sea ice, blizzards, and temperatures decreasing to negative 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeesh, I can't imagine the worst conditions in Antarctica if these conditions are in their favor. Lastly, look at this. It's timbers. They're very much intact. Plus, you can read the ship's name. It's still visible. Marine archaeologist Menson Bound says that this is the finest wooden shipwreck he has ever discovered. He has 50 years of career experience, so I believe the guy. So how come the wood is not rotten? Dr. Michelle Taylor, a deep-sea polar biologist, said that there has been little wood deterioration because the wood-munching animals are not in this forest-free region of Antarctica. 
Workers of a coal mine in East Serbia discovered three shipwrecks that had been there for at least 1,300 years. The largest shipwreck is an ancient Roman fleet. It's around 50 feet long with a flat bottom. It's estimated that the ship could carry a crew of 30 to 35 people. Looking at its hull, you can see the marks of repairs. Wow, this one had a lengthy career. You know, it gives us insight into more than a thousand years ago. The two smaller vessels, on the other hand, match descriptions of boats used by Slavic groups to attack the Roman frontier. These two have been discovered under mud and clay in an ancient riverbed. Apparently, in those times, there was a Roman base in a place called Viminasium City. Interestingly, Viminasium was a provincial capital with an estimated 40,000 inhabitants in the 4th century CE. For comparison, it was even larger than Pompeii. The Kostelac coal mine is a center of hidden gems. Archaeologists had found evidence of ancient human and animal activity here before. For instance, in 2012, experts found bones of at least five woolly mammoths, which went extinct about 10,000 years ago. Canadian archaeologists found a ship 150 years after it went missing in the Canadian Arctic waters. This merchant ship is called HMS Investigator. It was purchased in 1848 to search for the explorer Sir John Franklin's ship that got lost in the Northwest Passage expedition. So, HMS Investigator left Britain in 1850 for this rescue operation. The expedition crew, captained by Robert McClure, sailed the Investigator into the water. He realized that he was in the final leg of the Northwest Passage, the sea route across North America. But before he could sail into the Beaufort Sea, the 122-ton ship itself got stuck in the thick ice. The crew spent the winter over the Prince of Wales Strait. The following summer, McClure tried again to sail to the end of the passage, but the ice blocked his way once more. Here, too, the crew was forced to leave the ship. He steered the crew into the Bay of Mercy. There, they were to remain until 1853 when the crew of the HMS Resolute rescued them. Imagine a crew of 60 people who had to spend three winters in the Arctic without even knowing if they would survive. Later on, the ship was found sitting upright in about 36 feet of water. It was in very good condition. Arctic water has prevented the outer deck of the vessel from deteriorating quickly. The outline of the ship and its timber can be clearly seen. Plus, archaeologists have uncovered artifacts on land left by the sailors. They had unloaded everything before abandoning the investigator. Three sailor graves and one British naval shipwreck had also been discovered in the area. I wonder what else they could find there. More than 50 ships and 20 planes have disappeared here since the middle of the 19th century. You won't find this place using an ordinary paper map, since it's not an official region of the Atlantic Ocean. It's just a small area of water in the shape of a triangle, located not far from the southeastern coast of the U.S. In the 20th century, this place became a legend. Some believe it's home to a secret base. Others are positive it's a time portal. Ships get caught in a strong storm and move to the past or the future. There's also a theory that the city of Atlantis is located right under the Bermuda Triangle. Its technologies create bursts of energy and destroy ships. Even airplanes have a chance to disappear in this area. All this has gone so far that if something strange happens in the ocean, everyone thinks it's somehow connected with the Bermuda Triangle. The fear of the triangle has been made popular through books and movies. Directors, writers, and journalists like to use this theme. But in their works, you only see a few correct answers. You can find the truth about this place yourself if you look closely. But first, let's refute the weakest theories. Space objects, Atlantis, time travel, all these myths appeared in the middle of the 20th century. There weren't any records about mysterious phenomena before this time. People just noted that a lot of ships were sinking here. But then, one author wrote a book about Atlantis lying in the waters of the Triangle. The author didn't provide any evidence, but he described this hypothesis very convincingly. People read it and liked it. The human psyche likes to read something secret. When you learn something that no one knows about, it makes you feel special. And of course, you begin to believe in this secret. So this was one reason why the Bermuda Triangle book has become so popular. It brought the author a lot of money, and other people also wanted to enrich themselves the same way. 
Some other fantastic theories about time travel and secret bases have appeared since then. After that, people started making documentaries. All those works devoted to the mystical nature of the triangle were based not on real facts, but on theories from other books. It's impossible to find the truth in this chaos. Some people like to learn secrets, even if they're fake. But you can always find the truth if you really want. Just take any myth and try to find sources proving its reality. Most likely, you'll find nothing but non-scientific books and movies. There are also more realistic things about the triangle, but they are no less interesting. One hypothesis says that ships disappear there because of methane. Deposits of this gas are under the seabed of this region. Sometimes it releases from there and rises to the surface. As soon as methane comes into contact with water, it takes the form of giant bubbles. Then these bubbles foam the water and create large waves that flip the ships. This theory is quite real, and such a natural phenomenon exists, but not in the Bermuda Triangle. None of the numerous studies have confirmed the presence of an increased concentration of this gas here. The last methane eruption occurred here about 15,000 years ago. Another realistic theory is rogue waves. They form without storms and winds. The calm water's surface can transform into a big wave, the height of a five-story building, in three seconds. It sinks a ship and then quickly disappears. The sea is calm again as if there were no waves at all. Some scientists believe a surface sea current colliding with a strong headwind creates this phenomenon. But some recorded cases involved no wind. Another version says the wave is born thanks to the collision of warm and cold currents. But the most exciting theory talks about kinetic vampirism that forms the waves. Under certain natural conditions, waves get the ability to exchange kinetic energy. And among all the waves, there will be the biggest, the vampire one. It absorbs the energy from all the others. When the power is accumulated, the vampire wave splashes it out. This explains the force of the impact and its sudden disappearance. All theories seem logical, but scientists still can't figure out the nature of this phenomenon. Yes, rogue waves can carry ships underwater, but not only in the Bermuda Triangle. They rarely appear in all the waters of the world's oceans. So let's move on to the next theory. Some of those who sailed through this place reported their navigation devices had become unstable. The compass and electronics broke down. The signal and radio communications were lost. We need to look at the triangle from space to find out the reason. If you use special sensors and devices, you'll see that the Earth's magnetic field is weakened above the Bermuda Triangle. This field is a shield that protects us from solar radiation. The ISS astronauts said that the triangle gets more of the sun's particles than any other part of the planet. Therefore, electronics are unstable in this area. But such failures don't occur with satellites and other space objects flying within our planet's atmosphere. Areas with a weakened magnetic field appear all over the world, and they hardly ever disrupt navigation. This means that ships and planes work stably in such conditions. But all the same, a compass doesn't work correctly in the triangle area. Could it be that some magnetic anomaly affects the navigation systems? This theory was quickly refuted. Scientists regularly check the magnetic map of this region and don't find any deviations from the norm. The reason for the unstable functioning of a compass is not an anomaly. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the few places on the planet where the true north and magnetic poles coincide. True north is the geographical north pole. The magnetic pole is constantly moving around the globe directly to the north. Sometimes these poles collide and cause such a phenomenon as agonic lines. If you fall under this line, your compass will behave strangely and won't point you to the true north. That's why so many ships disappeared in this place at the beginning of the 20th century. People used an ordinary compass. They didn't have modern navigation technologies, and the misfunctioning of the compass could have led to disastrous consequences. Imagine that you're a ship's captain in, let's say, 1901. Your compass is guiding your way. You know you always need to sail north to get to land. Then you get into the Bermuda Triangle. You look at the compass and notice the arrow position has slightly changed. Now you need to move in another direction. 
This direction is the wrong one, but you don't know about it yet. You take the wrong path and end up in the Caribbean region. This area is full of tiny islands, and the seabed is not deep here. Your ship gets on a shoal. You're stuck and have no idea where you are. That's how some ships disappeared in this region. But if you had GPS, you wouldn't have lost your route and would have sailed safely to land. By the way, now in the 21st century, you can use a compass here without problems, since the magnetic North Pole doesn't meet the true one on the territory of the Bermuda Triangle anymore. The agonic lines are somewhere else right now. But still, for some reason, ships get lost here. And now we come to the most unexpected solution to the Bermuda Triangle problem. Yes, boats sometimes disappear in this region. And the reason for this is... Water, ocean, nature, call it whatever you want. Unfortunately, ships sink all over the world. Don't be afraid of just one triangle. There are places in the Atlantic Ocean territory where more boats disappear. And the Bermuda Triangle is not even in the top 10 of them. But why does no one know about them? Well, it's because people wrote fairy tales about one particular place. One of the most popular ship routes of the Atlantic passes through the Bermuda Triangle. Can you guess where most shipwrecks occur statistically? In a place with many sailing ships. That is, in this region. The only true statement about the Bermuda Triangle is frequent storms. But even bad weather and a raging sea doesn't always sink ships. Also, hurricanes often form in the Triangle territory. The Bermuda region has high atmospheric pressure. This pressure diverts storm clouds away towards the Triangle. Strong winds and large waves can sink ships, and lightning flashes can damage planes, but this is not unique. So don't blame the Triangle for all the problems. It's a beautiful and picturesque place that attracts many tourists. It was the wealthiest and most beautiful city ever to be seen. Stepping through its central gate alone would take your breath away with its elaborate decorations and towering marble statues. Everywhere you'd look, you'd find yet another marvel of civil engineering and cultural prowess. Yes, the lost city of Atlantis was truly the pinnacle of ancient civilization. That is, if it ever existed. Since it was supposedly swallowed by the sea in its entirety, it's no wonder some curious minds linked it to the Bermuda Triangle, another subject of endless mystery in popular culture, suspected of swallowing quite a few missing planes and ships. In the late 1960s, it's said that a group of treasure hunters stumbled upon the remains of an ancient city while diving in the Bermuda Triangle off the coast of Miami. Not only did they claim to encounter some intricate-looking ruins, but they also claim that they found a glass pyramid there, larger than any other pyramid ever discovered in Egypt. A huge glass pyramid on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean? No, that story turned out to be a hoax. Nevertheless, we do know that strange phenomena are still happening in the Bermuda Triangle, like volatile water currents or even the occasional vortex. When anyone mentions the Bermuda Islands, this mythical triangle is often the first thing that comes to mind due to all the mysterious disappearances or unexplained malfunctions. But there's a lot more to this territory than one mysterious triangle. Let me tell you about it, just in case you might want to visit. For a time after its discovery, Bermuda was briefly known as the Somers Isle, named after George Somers, a British privateer and naval hero. But the name that eventually stuck was the initial name, Bermuda, named after Juan de Bermudez, an explorer from Spain who discovered it in 1505. It's the oldest remaining British territory overseas, going back to a time before even the United Kingdom was established. The island's geographical creation is also unique. Scientists have recently discovered that the volcano that had generated this piece of land is like no other on Earth. Since it has pleasant weather almost all year, it's a great place for golfing, sporting eight world-class courses, often frequented by famous golf players or celebrities. You might just run into one by accident, if you're lucky. If you're more of a music fan, you would be interested to know that John Lennon got the inspiration for about 25 of his songs right here on this island, including classics such as Watching the Wheels, Woman, and Just Like Starting Over. 
Bermuda's official online travel guide even provides a Lenin-inspired itinerary, taking you from the Bermuda Botanical Gardens to the Masterworks Museum of Bermuda Art to Front Street, a district well known for its very active nightlife. William Shakespeare himself has an interesting connection with this island. His famous play, The Tempest, a story about a shipwrecked crew that end up on a magical island where they are tormented by an old man and his servants, was initially going to be set in the Mediterranean. But after learning about a real-life shipwreck in Bermuda, Shakespeare was supposedly inspired, and so moved the setting here. The island is also home to some fascinating animal wildlife. On hot summer nights, a special insect that glows in the dark, called the Bermuda fireworm, can be found in protected bay areas. There's also a unique species of birds here, the cowhouse, also known as Bermuda petrels. Believed to be extinct for about 300 years, they were rediscovered back in the 1950s, and a sanctuary was built for their protection. Currently, there are about 300 of these birds in Bermuda, total. Some of the first sailors to end up on the island at times reported strange sounds coming from inland and the surrounding waters after sunset. They even described what they heard as children screaming. So, of course, they thought it must have been because of witches or sea monsters. It took a little more time and research to figure out the sounds were coming from the cowhouse. These birds emit a very specific sound that can be easily confused with distressed human noises. Just as the Netherlands are famous for their tulips and Brazil for its coffee, Bermuda is well known for, drumroll please, onions. Yes, Bermuda used to export an amazing amount of onions back in the day, and the general quality of the vegetables produced here is said to be very high. Bermudians, that's how people living in Bermuda are called, are so proud of their onion heritage that when the clock strikes 12 on New Year's, a giant-sized onion decorated with beautiful lights is dropped in St. George's Town Square to usher in a new year. This is a big part of Bermudian tradition as their onion heritage is a point of pride for the Bermudian people. The community of Bermuda is known to be tight-knit and to be very friendly and sociable. It's common to say hi to everyone on the street, even if you aren't properly introduced. Not greeting people when entering a shop or jumping into a bus is actually considered rude, so be sure to get accustomed to locals saying hello when paying a visit. Another fascinating aspect of Bermuda is its architecture. The houses are all painted in bright, zesty colors. Bermudians take very good care of their homes, even repainting them every four to five years. And they can even choose the color of their house without any limits. The roofs, however, are a completely different story. When visiting, you will notice that they are all white and terraced. Here's why. Since there is no public water system in Bermuda, people living here have to collect their own water. And that's what the roofs are for. Rainwater is collected on the roofs and then funneled into water tanks for storage and future use. That's why it's so important that the roofs remain white. Not only is it much easier to spot debris on a white surface, but the white cement also helps with sanitizing the water. What about transportation? Well, only residents can drive a car here, and only a single car is permitted per household in terms of ownership. So if your trip itinerary includes renting a car, you may want to rethink it. If riding a bus is not your preference, there's always the option of renting a scooter. You just have to remember to drive on the left side of the road. It is a British colony after all. This wonderful location is also one of the few places on Earth with pink, sandy beaches. Because it's surrounded by coral reefs that are responsible for the special red pigment, Bermuda is home to some of the most spectacularly colored beaches in the world, such as Horseshoe Bay Beach, West Whale Bay, or South Shore Park. For those interested in more of a culinary experience, Bermuda has some interesting local dishes to explore. Its geographical location and the fact that it's surrounded by water mean that most local courses are based on fish and seafood. Here you can get a nice codfish breakfast, a Bermuda fish cake, or their famous Hoppin' John. A dish made with black-eyed peas, sliced sausage, bacon or chicken, Bermuda onion of course, and some brown rice, often seasoned with garlic and thyme. They do this last one for special occasions, like in January, during the Bermuda Restaurant Weeks, a culinary festival that you'd better not miss if you love a good feast. For a place to chill with a fantastic view, Bermuda offers two historic lighthouses, each with its own delightful peculiarities. 
To get to Gibbs Hill Lighthouse, for example, you would have to make a long pilgrimage up 185 steps. There's no elevator to get you there, so be sure you're properly hydrated before starting the journey. The panoramic view of the ocean, however, will make up for all the effort. There is also St. David's Lighthouse, which is known as an ideal spot for whale watching. Particularly in March and April, humpback whales generally pass through these waters as they travel north to their feeding grounds in Canada. The National Museum of Bermuda also provides an array of unique experiences, such as the Dolphin Quest. Through this program, tourists have the opportunity to view, meet, and interact with dolphins in a sheltered natural ocean lagoon environment. Searching for the best hidden Instagrammable spots? Then Crystal and Fantasy Caves is the place for you. They were actually discovered by accident in 1907. Two young boys, Carl Gibbons and Edgar Hollis, lost their ball while playing cricket. When one of the boys went down a hole to get the ball back, he discovered this magical place full of crystal formations surrounding a beautiful lake. Crystal and Fantasy Caves attract a huge number of tourists each year, and through a number of recently constructed bridges, they are now more easily accessible. Be sure to wear comfortable shoes, though. There's lots of other geographic, historic, and cultural attractions I could talk about, but I think you get the gist. Bermuda is a lovely and vibrant island paradise that offers so much more than conspiracy theories about missing planes and lost cities. The weather is pleasant, the people are friendly, and there's so much to do on this beautiful island. So what are you waiting for? Book a flight today! <laughs> Just a suggestion, of course. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he'd ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. A huge investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maroon 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area as a danger zone, and sailors were encouraged to avoid it. Some people blame all disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. 
Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Bermuda area. This gas tends to set off, and when it happens, bubbles start forming on the surface of the water. These gas eruptions can interrupt the ability to float and can easily sink a ship. Because of this chemical reaction, there won't be even a trace left. Underwater volcanoes are said to be another possible explanation for the Japanese Dragon's Triangle. In fact, they can take down even small islands. Luckily, nobody lives there. It's a pretty common thing in this area that some of them disappear underwater and others appear out of the blue because of seismic activity. You'll never find the Dragon's Triangle on any official map of the world, so nobody's quite sure about how large it is in reality. In July 2015, two teenagers disappeared after setting sail off the coast of Florida. There's some mystery about what the two teens were really getting up to. They told their parents that they were just going to fish, but they told their friends that they were crossing to the Bahamas. Shortly after they left, a line of thunderstorms moved towards the area, and the boys were never heard from again. A massive search was conducted, but sadly, nothing was found. One year later, the pair's boat was found off the coast of Bermuda with a broken iPhone and some personal effects left inside. One of the most popular and bizarre theories trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charles Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. Previously, the compass wouldn't work well in the Bermuda Triangle since the lines of the two poles coincided here – true north and magnetic north. But if you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. But the magnetic north is constantly shifting, and now it's far beyond the triangle. No legend says pirates of the last centuries operate in the Bermuda Triangle or that the Flying Dutchman makes other ships disappear. A popular theory is that ships travel to the distant past or future through a time portal in the Bermuda Triangle. Fortunately, these are all myths. Just imagine hundreds of giant tentacles reaching out to a group of ships sailing through the Bermuda Triangle. In the past centuries, they could easily sink an entire fleet, since the ships were made of wood and were lighter. Squids wrapped decks with their strong tentacles, made holes in the ship's hulls with their sharp beaks. Toothy suction cups could break the masts and tear the sails. The water was filling the holds and slowly rising to the deck. The ship sank in a matter of minutes. Survivors reached the shore and told everyone about huge monsters. This is how the legends of the Kraken appeared. Fortunately, now people have sonars and equipment for monitoring the sea space. They say the main reason why this place is so enigmatic must be the magnetic fields that form this ominous triangle. Ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to the high concentration of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Magnetic fields tend to shift their position, so do tectonic plates and even the continents, even though we never notice it. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Seems like the Bermuda Triangle has an alternate not only on Earth, but even in space. Spacecraft usually don't disappear into thin air, though, like there's no air. This anomalous area is really large and stretches right above the South Atlantic. It occupies the area from Chile to Zimbabwe and sits right at the point where Van Allen radiation belts are the closest to the surface of our planet. The Earth has two such belts, which come in handy trapping the particles that shoot in from the Sun. They do a great job protecting the Earth from radiation. The magnetic field there is lower, so it allows the Earth's radiation belt to come closer to the surface. 
Whenever a satellite passes by, it will be exposed to radiation which might lead to serious damage. So no satellite can take pictures of it. The South Atlantic anomaly is part of the Earth where natural radiation just flows out of control. Still, there is little evidence that all these triangles are really dangerous. Many believe the Bermuda Triangle itself has been proven time and again to be nothing but a work of fiction. In fact, some shipwrecks, such as the Ellen Austin, gained popularity in the middle of the 20th century, while nobody even thought of drawing a triangle in the Bermuda area before that. The mystery was popularized by science fiction writers and became a common myth, while no serious research proved it any more dangerous than other parts of the world's ocean. So the crew of the Ellen Austin back in 1881 weren't even aware of the Bermuda Triangle back then, let alone afraid of it. What do you think?